September 22nd, early Saturday morning, Boulder, Colorado. The 10th running of the Continental Divide rally begins. 500 miles in two days over some of the roughest terrain in the United States. That's the layout, all against time. That's the catch. They come from miles around, from every state in the Union. Doctors, lawyers, engineers, architects, businessmen, and women, too. Amateurs all, but with one important thing in common, sports cars. Here's how they look as they brand their rally machines. Synchronize watches against official radio time signals. Install complicated navigable equipment. Make ready to put their cars through the kind of pace that makes racing look like Sunday riding. Here's how they sound. Registration, confusion with a purpose. All cars will travel the same route one minute apart. Driver and navigator teams, you must match the exact average speeds set by official rally cars for every section of the course. Penalty points will be given for every second you are early or late into any checkpoint. Here's what they draw. Jags, Porsches, Austin Healy's, Simcas, Mercedes. And among the foreign bred sports crowd, a surprise entry, three Chrysler 300s. Each car is different, but each car will be judged by the clock in the same impartial way for the same outstanding sports car quality, controlled performance. The ability to do exactly what the driver wants exactly when he wants to, no matter what the terrain or weather. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. Thank you. Welcome. They move out. Driver, navigator, machine. 77 cars, 77 teams. Ahead, two days, 16 hours of controlled performance driving over strange highways, through mountain passes, on treacherous dirt roads, all against the stopwatch, calibrated to the nearest tenth of a second. Take the Colorado Continental Divide. Pretty country, but rough. Map out a 500-mile, two-day rally over its rugged hills through its beautiful aspen forest. Clock this course to the second, under ideal conditions, with the best sports car you can get. Time it in chunks of 20 to 50 miles and put a checkpoint there. In an instruction sheet, tell a driver and a navigator team what they have to do to cover the course exactly as you have. Now take 77 sports cars, including three Chrysler 300s, and challenge them to match your record for every stretch of timed road. Penalize them severely, even if they're only one second late at each checkpoint. And don't forget, spice the course well. Rough roads, treacherous curves, sheer cliffs add plenty of excitement. And if you have them, throw in a few tunnels, bridges, and hairpin turns. Sound like fun? That's what a rally's all about. But what's this full-size American car doing at a European-type sports car event? What's it doing competing with sensitive, specialized sports car machinery? That's easy, trying to prove a point. Scott Harvey, a Chrysler engineer, thought of it. His hobby is sports car competition. He figured it might be interesting to see how a full-size 300 Chrysler, built for everyday use, would stack up when the chips were really down. Raw power isn't enough in any car. Handling ease, Flexibility, road control, maneuverability, controlled handling. That's what counts. That's where you find the true worth of any car. Keep her about 35, Scott, and get ready to make a right turn onto the side road in about 30 seconds. This might get tricky. The distance check is on the side road after the blind corner. Correct. The Curta calculator, or pepper mill, is the heart of any rally car. It lets the navigator calculate average speeds to the exact second, gives him a direct comparison between time and distance, helps tell him where to turn, change direction, speed up. 
checkpoint. Recorded time stop. Four seconds late. Penalty, four points. Remain in the car. Talk only to the control captain. We're out in the 28th minute. One hundred sixty-seven miles. Power up to eleven thousand feet. Maneuver down to five. Good highway, but plenty of traffic. Tight section. Seconds count here. Could be a control anywhere. Mash it. Right on schedule? Only for a few minutes. Lost time in town. No smooth highway. Make up the seconds on every curve. Controllability is the key. Ten seconds late. Eight seconds late. Six. Four. On time, in time. Passage control. Non-stop checkpoint. Checker will note your time. First day's action. Cruised from Boulder east to Colorado 7. Sped south to Golden on to US 6, then west over Berthoud Pass. Took 40 just beyond Granby to the Wyoming border. From Laramie south to Laporte, and at the end of the day, back to Boulder. Nine recorded checkpoints, Five non-stop passage controls were added to the terrain and traffic. Kept driver, navigator, and rally machine plenty busy. But it was Sunday when the action really began. 175 miles of it. Gold Hill, dirt road, narrow canyon, loose surface. Not many checked in on time here. Well, that's what happened at Boulder during the 10th running of the Continental Divide Rally. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering how Scott made out with his Quashler 300 experiment, here's the score sheet. In a field of 77 sports cars, three Chrysler 300s placed second, fourth, and ninth. Won three trophies and a team prize. Not a bad two days' work for a family car that's designed to bring home the groceries, too. <laughs>